Hi everybody, today we are going to be talking about center of mass, which is part of momentum, might seem a little bit strange, but usually in this chapter of momentum, we're going to be doing dealing with problems with center of mass. Alright, so center of mass, uh, mass weighted average position of the particles. Um, things you should know is things can balance whenever you find the center of mass. So if you this is where the average mass position is, and if you're to point a point there, it will balance at that point. Another thing to know is wherever the center of mass is, things will rotate around that point. So this broomstick will rotate around this point, and for this, uh, if you were to flip this wrench, it would rotate around this point, right? Also, another thing to know is that the center of mass, let's say for like a donut, can be where there's no object. So this would be the center of mass, okay? So no, there's no part of the mass there, but the center of mass is still in this hollow area. All right, let's do some problems. Let's look at this first example. Uh, this is the formula that's on your formula sheet and what you guys should know. Center of mass is equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3, uh, so on, divided by all the masses. So what are the center of mass of these two objects? So we're going to see we have this 2 kilogram object and this 6 kilogram object. How we're going to do this is we're first going to establish a zero point. That's what I like to call a zero point. And I personally like to always put the zero point all the way to the left. So this is the zero point that I'm going to put, and now we're going to use this formula. Uh, the formula looks something more like this, actually. Center of mass is equal to sum of all mass times positions divided by sum of all mass. So let's just look at this. Okay, The center of mass is equal to uh, the mass m1, so that's mass 1, it's going to be 2 kilograms, times the position of this one. And this one's right at the zero point, so this is going to be at position 0, plus the 6 kilogram object, and that's going to be 10 centimeters away from that zero point. So this is going to be 10 centimeters away. This is going to be divided by all the mass. So 2 plus 6. And let's see what this gives us. And we get around 7.5. And then since we have centimeters here, we have 7.5 centimeters. So what we can see is the center of mass uh, of these two objects is going to be around this point right here. Okay. All right. It's, it's kind of a uh, you don't really see examples like this, but uh, it's just like an intro to this uh, center of mass problem. All right. Gonna just kind of skip this. Let's look at this. A two meter rod of negligible mass connects two very small objects at its end. The mass of one object is one kilogram, and the mass of the other object is unknown. The center of mass of the system is on the rod, a distance 1.6 meters from the 1 kilogram mass object. What is the mass of the other object? Okay, so let's look at this. This is where the center of mass is. And like I said, I always like to put the zero point all the way at the end. It doesn't matter, you can put it anywhere, but I like to always put it all the way to the left. So now let's see, x, c, m. And we're going to do m1, x1, plus m2, x2, since there's two masses, m1 plus m2. So let's fill that all out. M1, mass of the first object is 1 kilogram. Oh, and we know where the center of mass is because they're both balanced at this point right here. So it, the center of mass is actually at 1.6 meters. So this is going to be 1.6 meters. Is equal to the mass of the first object is 1, and it's at the zero point, so this is just 0, plus mass of the second object, which we don't know. I'm just going to call that M, and it's positioned 2 meters away from that zero point, so I'm going to put this as 2, uh, divided by uh, 1 plus m. Okay, I'm going to bring this 1 plus m to the other side, so this is going to be 1.6 plus 1.6 m, and then this is going to be equal to 0 plus 2m, so 2m. Uh, bring this to the other side, 1.6 is equal to 0 0.4m, and then we have m as... 1.6 divided by 0.4, uh, 4 kilograms, right? And what we should know is uh, if we were to look at this, this is proportional. Uh, we have 4 kilograms here times 0.4 away. That's going to give us, let's see, 4 kilograms times 0.4, uh, 1.6. Uh, and then this one, this is 1 kilogram and 1.6 meters away, which gives us proportionally 1.6 as well. Okay, so it's proportional. 
All right, let's look at this. And this one is a little bit more difficult because uh, we have a two-dimensional problem. A person's arm is held with the upper arm vertical, the lower arm and hand horizontal. Find the center of mass of the arm in, in this configuration, given the following uh, data. The upper arm has a mass of 2.5 kilogram and center of mass 0.18 meters above the elbow. The lower arm has a center of mass 1.6 kilogram and a center of mass 0.18. 1, 2 meters to the right of the elbow. The hand has a mass of 0.64 kilograms and a center of mass of 0.4 meters to the right of the elbow. Meters. Okay. So let's all figure this out. First, we have to create a zero point, and we're going to create this zero point right here. It's pretty much all the way to the left and all the way to the bottom. That's where my zero point is going to be. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to find what the center of mass is in the x direction, but also in the y direction since this is, um, this is two-dimensional. I'm going to call this first one m1. I'm going to call this one m2. And I'm going to call this one m3. Okay, so m1 is equal to 2.5. And on the x-axis, it's actually zero meters away. So it's right at the zero point. So this is just zero. Plus 1.6. And that one is 0.12 away. 0.12. Plus, we have the 0.64 kilograms. And that one is 0.4 meters away. I'm going to divide this by all the mass. 2.5 plus 1.6 plus 0.64. And now let's find what the center of mass is going to be. 1.6 times 1.12 times 0.64 times 0.4 divided by 2.5 plus 1.6 plus 10 times 0.12 plus 0.5 uh, and then we should get around 0 0.09 meters. Uh, so I think meters, yeah, 0 0.09 meters. So we know, uh, I'm going to say 0 0.095 actually meters, 0 0.095 meters. So we know in the x direction, the center of mass is going to be around uh, over here. Okay, but now we have to find the center of mass in the y direction. So in the y direction, we have the 2.5 kilogram, and that's going to be above the 0 0.0.818 meters, 0.18. The other object, 1.6, is still on the zero line axis in the y direction, so that's just zero. Plus the other arm, 0.64, is also on the zero line uh, y axis, so that's just zero. To add this all up to 2.5 plus 1.6 plus 0.64. And let's see what this all equals. 2.5 times 0.18 plus 1.6 times 0.64. Oh, uh, divided by... Plus 1.6 plus 0.64. And we should get around the same thing, actually, 0 0.095 meters. Uh, it's kind of a coincidence. It's not going to be the same, but that's what uh, it is. And now if we want to find uh, what the center of mass is, we could just use this. We know it's going to be in the x direction, 0 0.095, in the y direction, 0 0.095, and then this will be the position. So we can say from the 0... We can do 0 0.095 squared, uh, do Pythagorean theorem. We can say it is 0.13 meters at 45 degrees. Okay? So that's it's going to be around this point right here. This is the center of mass. Okay? So that's how you do it when it's in two dimensions. All right, let's move on. In the figure, a 60 centimeter length of uniform wire of 60 grams and negligible thickness is bent into a right triangle. The x and y coordinates of the center of mass is in centimeters are closest to blank. Okay, so we know this has a total of 60 grams. Then we know that uh, it's laid out like this, and we want to find what the center of mass is. So... What we want to do is we want to proportionally find how much mass is it from here to here, how much mass is from here to here, 
and how much mass is it from here to here? Uh, so let's f find what the total length is. We have the total length, 26 plus 24, uh, which is going to give us 50, and 10 centimeters, so it's a 67. Oh, sorry, they gave it to us, 60 centimeters. And we also know 60 grams. So what we can see is if this is, uh, sorry, uh, in this case, I guess it's kind of easy. So this part of it, this mass here, is going to be also equal to 26 uh, grams. This mass here is equal to 10 grams, and this mass here is equal to 24 grams. Okay, and that sh and that should be that should make sense. So if the total is 60, uh, and this is 26 centimeters, that means it's also going to have a mass of 26 uh, grams. This portion. Of the next thing that we should know is something when it's uniform, the center of mass uh, is going to be from the center point right here. So this is going to be the center point, this is going to be the center point, then around uh, this is going to be the center point right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the center of mass in the x direction and the y direction. So in the x direction, uh, let's call this one M1, we'll call this one M2, and we'll call this one M3. Uh, M1, 10 grams, times, it's, and we're going to say this is the zero point, it's zero meters from the zero point, so it's zero, plus M2, which is 24, and this one is going to be 12 centimeters away, so that's going to be 12, plus uh, this mass is 26, from the x-axis, this is also going to be at the 12 centimeter mark. Okay. Divide this all by 10 plus, oh, yeah, plus 24 plus 26. Okay, and let's find what the total is going to be. And we get around 10 centimeters. So in the x direction, it's going to be around 10 centimeters. So it could either be D or E. And now let's find in the y direction. Center of mass of the y direction, the first one, 10 grams. It's on the y axis, and it goes up. This is going to be going up. This is 10 centimeters. This is going to be going up 5 centimeters. So it's going to be 5. Plus, we have the M2, which is 24. But it's on the y axis. So that means this is just going to be 0, plus 26. This one's also going to be up 5 centimeters. Add this by all the mass, 10 plus 24 plus 26. And let's see what we get for this. Uh, 3 centimeters. And then what we can see is D is the correct answer. All right. Okay, moving on. Uh, let me skip these videos. All right, let's look at this. A uniform piece of wire, 20 centimeters long, is bent in a right angle uh, in the center uh, to give it an L shape. How far from the bend is the center of mass of the bent wire? Okay. This one might seem a little bit difficult, but hopefully it's okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to make the zero point right here. And we know since this is a uniform wire, uh, the mass is concentrated right in the middle right there, and mass is concentrated right in the middle right there. Uh, we're going to call this length of the stick m. And since this has the same length and it's uniform, it will have the same mass m. All right, so let's figure this out. Let's first do the x direction. So the first one, we have this mass uh, m. In the x direction, it has a position 0. Second one uh, has a mass m, and as a position, it's going to be going 5 centimeters. So 5. And then we're going to divide this by 2m. So let's see what this gives us. Uh, m divided by two sides, so this is going to give us 2.5 centimeters in the x direction. In the y direction, we're going to do something similar, m, but this one is going to be going up 5 centimeters. 5. Plus the other m, uh, it's on the y-axis, so this is just 0. Uh, and then add both the mass, 2m. 
So then this is going to give us 2.5 centimeters. Mm -mm -mm. So now how far is it? Now we can just do Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be uh, around here. 2.5 squared plus 2.5 squared, square root of that, and we get 3.54 meters. Okay, so from here to here, from the bend, is 3.5, no, 4 centimeters. Sorry, we did this in centimeters. Okay. All right. And I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, something cool with the Fosbury flop, if you want to look at that, having to do with center of mass. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so next time when we talk, we're going to be doing some advanced problems. Thanks for watching, everyone.